would love to tell you that I was caught by surprise about about opening this morning, but that isn't so. I actually saw the agenda yesterday. But I thought of I don't want to break our eardrums before we ever get started. I was thinking this morning, who's in agreement with David who said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Man. Did you get up this morning and say, it's Sunday. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Or did you get up and say, it's Sunday. I got to get up and get ready for church. I overslept this morning, but still my spirit inside me was saying, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here this morning? Are you, are you thankful that you have another day that you can come and you can worship our Savior, our Lord, and our King? Because that's what today is. Today is all about Him. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Him. And He has given us this day to worship Him. Our reading, our scripture comes from Psalms 24, verses 1 through 10. The earth is the Lord. Please stand with me. The earth is the Lord and all it contains, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in, the, in his holy place? One who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to deceit and has not sworn deceitfully. He will receive a blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, even Jacob. Even Jacob. Did you hear? Did you really hear that scripture? I'm not going to preach, Pastor, I promise. But did you hear that scripture? Who can, who can stand? Who can stand in the presence of the Lord? I'm going to lead us in prayer, but I want you to remain standing because, again, today we have come into this house to magnify Him, to worship Him. And who can stand in His presence? Us. Us. We have that privilege. Father, we thank You so much for this day. We thank You for Your love and mercy. We thank You for Your goodness towards us. We thank You for the price that You paid, Lord, that we may be free. Lord, we thank you for the price that so many before us have paid. Lord, that we might stand in a sanctuary and declare that you are God, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the soon coming returning King. We thank you for that privilege. We thank you that today, Lord, you have prepared our pastor to open the word and to feed us to give us that needed strength as we come before you with yes, humble hallelujah. hearts and with praise upon our lips. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing. Hallelujah. How is everybody this morning? Glory, glory. Hey, Dennis, put up the rest of that scripture. Because it goes on to say in verse 7. Give him a second. Three, two, one, pop. No. There we go. Lift up your heads, ye gates. Be lifted up, ye ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. So now, just imagine yourself as that gate. Imagine yourself as that, no offense, ancient door. Why? So that the king may come in. And the question is, who is the king of glory? Who is it? Who is it? It's up there. The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Keep going. Lift up your heads, ye gates, and lift them up, ye ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. 
Who is the King of glory? The Lord of armies. He is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? Who is strong and mighty? Do you have something going on today? Do you have some family members that you know need God? Do you have somebody that you know that's a friend that is going through a hard time? You can be the gate that God uses and enters in to minister to them. But you need him inside you to be able to do that. And that is that when the pastor had that scripture ready and I read, I was like, oh, my gosh, Woo! that hurts. But it's also good news because that means if we don't open, he's unable to come in and help us. So open yourselves as you worship. Open yourselves up, lift his name up, love him, because he is holy, holy, holy. And just give me one second, I'm, I'm going to try something. So just uh, pray with me that this whole thing is uh, glorifying to him. <laughs> All right, you ready? Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy to receive glory, isn't he? Worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive all our praise. Sing that again. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. He is worthy to receive glory and worthy to receive honor.
hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I remember, you remember that old song? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. No? Nobody remembers that? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Okay, this is a participation thing. So let's try this again. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. And then it would go, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. All together, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First time playing this is uh, not first time playing. Let me rephrase. First time playing this by myself.
You are the strength of my life. How do we reflect that? If God is the strength of our life, how does that reflect in our life? It should reflect in how we behave. It should reflect in what we do. If God is the strength of our life, we ought to behave in a manner that honors Him. And this morning we come to the time that we give our gifts and offerings to praise Him, thank Him for what He's done, and enable us to carry forth His Word in this community. So as we come to give our tithes and offerings, let us remember He is the strength of our life. He is the one who affects our behavior. And portion of our behavior is what we give back to Him. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be able to come and worship you this morning. Lord, you are the strength for us. You affect everything we do. Our life is guided by what you've taught us to do. Lord, we thank you for all of that. We thank you for many blessings that you've given us. Lord, it all comes from you. Lord, this morning as we bring our tithes and offering, we, we ask that you bless them. Bless them to your service. Lord, help us be sure we spend them wisely to carry your name forward in this community and beyond. All of this we ask in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Since I laid my, my burden down, my friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I laid my burdens down, I'm going home to live with Jesus. Since I laid my, my burden down, I'm going home to live with Jesus. down sing glory glory oh glory glory hallelujah since i laid my my burden down well glory glory hallelujah since i laid my burdens down i feel much better oh so much better since I laid my, my burden down, I feel much better, so much better since I laid my burdens down. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my, my burden down, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. down well glory glory hallelujah since i laid my my burden down well glory glory hallelujah since i laid my burden down keep going mike oh glory hallelujah since I laid my, my burden down, well, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid 
my burden is down. I love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Since I laid my my burden down, I love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Since I laid my burden down. Amen. Amen. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down. Since I laid my burdens down. You know, the snake is on attack. Shortly before we got ready to come into the sanctuary, he decided he was going to try to hit me one more time. I started to feel a little bad. Then I said a little prayer and Mike started playing. And the Holy Spirit took over. That's why I love the Lord. For he heard my cry. Pitted my every groan. As long as I live, troubles rise. I'll run to his to his throne. Songwriter says the charge to keep we have, a God to glorify. Why? Because he sent his son, our souls to save, and he fitted them for the sky. He says to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. Oh, me it all. Our power engaged to do our master's will. I tell you, he's a good God. I want to thank Pastor Linda for opening for us today. But he's a good God. I'm going to say that again because I don't think nobody heard me. He's a good God. Amen. I think about all of the things that's going on in the church prop, and I think about Jim and, and Linda and Julia, the problems that she had with trying to give birth to a child. But in God's own time, he delivers on time a healthy, beautiful child. God is good. He's better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Sometimes when I'm in my devotional state, I ask myself, Lord, why are you so good to me? What is it that I've done to inherit all of this that you bestow upon me? And the answer always comes back. You're my child. And I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. I tell you, God is good. In sickness, he's good. Yes, he In is. trouble, he's good. No matter what you're going through, God is good. All the time he is. And he can do anything but fail. We bow with Lord, we thank you now for another beautiful new day. We thank you that you woke us up early this morning, still with five senses, still able to do all of the things that we did on yesterday. We thank you, Father, that we are one of the ones who are still here, whose tongues have not been cleaved and going on from this place but you seem fit to allow us to come into your house one more time we're so glad that you love us so and we just pray right now that your spirit as always will take full control 
God, we need your spirit to lead us and guide us in everything that we do. Plant your seeds in our hearts that we might grow to bring forth fruit. Some 100, some 60, and some 30 fold. That a dying world might know that you still live. Bless now, Lord, like you've never blessed us before. For we're looking for your miracles. Miracle upon miracle in our lives. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. Our text for preaching comes from the book of John, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 5. John, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 5. We stand for the reading of God's word. <clears throat> Jesus spoke these things, and raising his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all mankind, so that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth by accomplishing the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. Glorify now myself with the glory that I had with you before the world began. You may be seated. Pray for me this morning. I, I want to talk this morning about glory. Uh, about glory. John MacArthur wrote a book called The Twelve Ordinary Men. Twelve Ordinary Men. And, and, and you know those, those twelve disciples that, that Jesus chose. You, you know that was uh, Peter and his brother Andrew. You know that that was James and John, the sons of thunder. That was uh, Thaddeus and, and Judas and Judas Iscariot and James the less. You know who they were. Twelve ordinary men. They, 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 they come and they spend three and a half years with the master. And during all these years, you can see them going through all of the different uh, phases that Jesus took them through. They, they sat at the knee of Jesus and Jesus taught them his word. He taught them about God the Father. He taught them about living right. He, he laid out for them the heavenly view of all that God expected. On one instance, Jesus sent them out two by two. He said, go to the house of Israel and take this word, heal and, and cast out demons and do all these things. The power of God was upon these twelve ordinary men. The Bible says when they came back, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. He went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and there the glory of God was allowed to seep through as he talked with Elijah and Moses, and Peter, James, and John saw this. But when they came back down off the Mount of Transfiguration, there was a man that came to him and said, I brought my son to your disciples to be healed, but they couldn't heal him. And Jesus made the same, oh, ye of little faith. Think about what has happened now. 
They have just come back from, from using this power to, to cast out demons and, 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 and heal the sick and all of those things. And now a man brings his son to them. And they can't heal him. Why is it you think that this happened with these disciples? I submit to you that. The reason why it happened was because they were seeking glory. But it was the glory of themselves. They walked on with Jesus. They did tremendous things as they walked with him. But they were always having issues with one another. You remember. Miss Zebedee came and said that Jesus... When you come into your kingdom, let one of my sons sit on your right hand and one sit on the left. Can you just imagine that discussion among these 12 ordinary men who are really seeking glory for themselves? Sit on the right hand and sit on the left hand. What happens to the other 10? In the upper room at the Last Supper, can you just imagine what's going through their minds? Peter, James, and John want to tell the story. We were with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. Twelve ordinary men who spent three and a half years with Jesus Christ. And at the end, they really had not accomplished much of anything except their own Glory. God says, I won't share my glory with anyone. But yet we see in these 12 ordinary men the very steps that we also take. We could insert our names in any of those 12 and see ourselves in the life of the master. Because we all do things for our own glory. You got people who stand on the gate of the church door for 60 years. And they stand on that gate and say that I'm on my post. And people come by and say, you know, you've been here for 60 long years standing on your post. And they boast about it. Yes. My own glory. My own glory. I remember... When I was a young man, if you asked me the question, what do you want to be when you get grown? I'd tell you a baseball player, professional baseball player. And I lived, I drank, I ate, I slept, I thought baseball. Every, everything that could happen on a baseball diamond was automatic with me because I played it over and over and over and over into my mind. So if, the, if I was on the mound pitching and the, wherever the ball was hit, I immediately went where I needed to be. And then God allowed that to happen. Drafted, played a year, ended up in the Marine Corps. When I went back to play again, my arm wouldn't hold up. So one day I was having a pity party. And I said, Lord, you, 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 you allowed me to get here. Why did you not let me keep playing? He said, well, you forgot. Who put you there? I was playing for my own glory. I was playing for the cheers of the people in the stands. I, I was playing for the acceptance of all of them that, that I was a great baseball player rather than playing baseball to glorify God. In Bible study, we, the Sunday school this morning talked about a couple of the players in the NFL who, who unequivocally give God the glory for everything that goes on in their lives. Personal glory. Personal glory. And we have all of us at points and times in our lives do things for our own glory, for our own edification, for our own honor, for somebody to cheer us on. Glory. I may not make it to my text this morning. <laughs> glory. 
But what is glory? What is glory? Glory means something difficult or weighty. Heaviness. Worth. The worthiness. Re reputation or honor. These are what's tied up in this whole word of glory. Being worth something. A reputation. A reputation of being a, a great fastball pitcher. Honor. Standing in the image and being given an award. For something that you did that God gave you the ability to do. Glorying in self. Glorying in self. The Bible gives us some examples of glory. In the Old Testament, Joseph refers to his wealth and position in Egypt. He told his brothers when he revealed himself, he said, go back and tell my daddy of my worth, my position, my power. Go back and tell my daddy. But what's the difference with Joseph? Joseph went through the struggle. Son, brothers selling him into slavery, going to prison, and everything else before God revealed to him what he had for him to do. So Joseph could stand and say, go tell my daddy about my position. Because he understood where the position came from. Who put him in that position. Who blessed him to be number two in Egypt. Who blessed him with the weight and, and worthiness that he had. Who blessed him with the wealth that he had. <coughs> he understood. The temple was a splendid building and was described as a place of fame and of glory. God had the temple built. And he had it built in such a way with so many different kinds of metals and things where it was a splendid building. I remember the Bible says that when, when Solomon finished the temple, he prayed. And the prayer, God received the prayer as such that they could not enter the temple because the Holy Spirit was so thick. That cloud landed in there. The glory that, that Solomon had that when he finished that temple was a glory that glorified God and not Solomon. Splendid place. Beautiful place. You can just imagine in your mind all of the beauty all the splendor, all of the, the gold and the silver and diamonds that David had saved up for this temple. Aaron's garments were for glory and for beauty. When you look at the garments that's outlined in the book of Leviticus for Aaron and his son. You look at how they are woven. You look at the colors that they were made of. You, you look at the, the, the bells that existed on the hem of their clothes. You look at everything that God had designed for them. And you see that the beauty that God had put in them. <coughs> they were glorious. God outfitted them in glory. A crown is a glory. Paul says that there's a crown for everyone who look for the appearing of Jesus Christ. A crown. A king's crown would have gold and diamonds and all kinds of, of, of jewels in it. Sparkle for days and days as the sun would hit it. It's a thing of glory. A thing to be seen. Saul's daughter, Michael. If you remember, she got on David because when David went and got the, the, the holy place and he was bringing it back to Jerusalem and he was dancing all over the place and his, he danced till his, his clothes fell off him. She says, look how you've honored Israel today. 
David was dancing because he wanted to give glory to God for God bringing everything back to Jerusalem. But she couldn't see it that way. She said, you dancing for your own honor. Your own glory. <coughs> glory. Glory. Paul, speaking to the Athenians, said, We ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, a representation by the art and imagination of man. God's glory is God himself, and as such he cannot be represented by any human image, nor does he need any such image to glorify him. In fact, in so representing him, we dishonor him. The glory of God in effect. The term used to express what we can comprehend originally by sight. You got to see it. Of the presence of God on this earth. The glory of God is when we know who and what he is. To make it even clearer. Bingo writes this. The glory of God is the divinity of Manifested. The glory is God manifested. That's one of the problems with Christians today. We can't see. We want to see God through worldly eyes and we can't see. But if we put on spiritual eyes, then we can see who God is. Read this morning that you don't light a candle and put it on the bushel. You put it on the shelf where the light can shine. God is light. And his glory is light. But if we're always walking in darkness, we'll never see his glory. When you look at the text, it says, these things Jesus spoke and lifting up his eyes to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that the son may glorify you. He done spent in this discourse from John the 13th chapter to John 16. Now he prays this priestly prayer. Says he lifted up his eyes. And he says, the hour has come. What hour is he talking about? Jesus came to die. Three and a half years he spent with these disciples and, and he's, he's talked, he's wrought miracles, he's done all sorts of things. But that's not the reason he came. He, he didn't come to open blind eyes, if you will. That's not the primary reason why he came. He did those things that, that people might know that God was still working in the world, but the reason he came was to die. His time now has come. Father, my, the time has come. The, the, the time that in eternity past that God told him that, that I want you to go down here and I want you to buy my band back. Now, this is how you have to buy him back. You got to go to an old rugged cross. You, you, you made the tree that they're going to make the cross out of, but you need to buy my, my man back. Father, the hour now has come. We, we have come to the hour now where all the miracles are going to cease here through me. All these other things that I've done now are going to cease. The hour has come when I go to the apex of why you sent me. I'm going to an old rugged cross. Going to an old rugged cross. I'm going there to this cross that all of these people, Lord, that you have made past, present, and future will have an opportunity to have eternal life. Father, because I've done all that you called me to do. I've done everything you sent me to do. Now glorify me. That I might in turn glorify you. Jesus. 
in eternity past. The Bible teaches that God is one God. And he shows himself in three persons. Jesus in eternity past shared in that glory that God the Father shared in. So God was clothed in glory. But in order to come this, to this sin-filled earth and in order to buy us back, Jesus had to take off his robe of glory, lay it aside. Come down here in the form of a baby. Live as a human being. Go through the agonies and, and the problems that we face every day. And now he says, Father, I, I've done it all. The only thing left is the cross. But I've done it all and because all is done and time is now. Glorify me. Glorify me. That I might glorify you. You see, everything that, everything that we do ought to have in it the idea that when we've done it, that it's going to glorify God, that it's going to lift God up, that everything in our lives is going to make God first place in our lives so people can see who this God is. They can come to know that this God has come to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. Glorify me now, Father, that I might glorify you. Prepare to put my coat back on me. Put my, put my glory robe back on me. Clothe me again in the glory that I had with you before the world began. Oh, you don't get it. <laughs> You don't get it. E eternity is talking to eternity. You don't get it. The son existed in eternity past with the father. The, the plan is now. The plan has come to fruition. It's time to go to the cross. I, I love it when, when Jesus says, all that you gave me, I have not lost one. What is eternal life? Eternal life is to be with you, Father. Eternal life is not a stretch of time. Eternal life is a, a quality of life. And those of us who are saved have that quality of life now. We have eternal life. Glorify me, that I might glorify you. On the cross, Jesus, Jesus, greatest glorification of the Father exists on the cross. How many of us would want to die for a friend or a relative or anybody? But the glory, Jesus' glory is seen on the cross as he goes to take on the sins of the world. I know some of us in here don't have sin. But those of us who do, he takes on this sin and he's glorifying his father who's in heaven by being brutally uh, killed on an old rugged cross. Glory. Glory. He's not asking for anything of himself. He's giving willingly all of himself. Those of us who needed help, who had no way out. Glory. The hour has come, he said. Glorify thy son that the son may glorify you. You know, there, there are a lot of people that think that, that, that when Jesus was on the cross, that God turned his back on him. A lot of people think that. But I'm here to tell you, 
Well, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came down and he rested on him. In, in, the, in the book of, of, of uh, Colossians, it said that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. When was the world reconciled? When Christ was on the cross. Almighty God, the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ is there reconciling us back to himself. Buying his man back. Pay the price that nobody else could pay. God himself coming to the buy man. Glorify me that day. <laughs> that I can glorify you. And as the voice says, you've already glorified me on that cross. But the glory didn't stop there. He was glorified in the grave. He was glorified in the resurrection. And he was glorified in the ascension. And he sits on the right hand side of God, making intercessions for us. Glory. Glory. Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever really thought about what the master has done in order to get us to a place of eternal life? Now, actually, there are two eternal lives. But eternal life with him. You see, if you're, not, if you're not going to be with Jesus Christ in eternity, then you're going to be with the snake in hell for eternity. But I'm glad that on that cross, he, he, he took my sins. And I'm glad that, 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 that the Holy Spirit worked with my heart and brought it to a point where that ground of my heart was good ground and those seeds started to take root. I'm glad. Because he saved me. I don't know about you. I'm glad Paul. Because of Jesus Christ, I've learned I can be content. No matter what the situation. If I'm sick, I'm content. Because I know he's right there with me. If, if I'm hurting, I'm content. Because I know he's right there with me. I don't need to worry. I told some of you the story, I'll just tell you a brief part of it. When, when I had my kidney removed in 2016, and, and eight days after I got home, I ended up with double pneumonia and, and back in a hospital for six days. The first five days that, that I laid there in the hospital, I had an angel that was posted at the foot of the right side of my bed for five long days watching over me. That's why I love him. My own personal God, standing God, watching over good old me. What am I? That God would, would, would put an angel down and watch over me. But that's the God that we serve. Glorify me, Daddy, that I might glorify you. We, too, ought to have that same attitude. Father, glorify me that I might glorify you. Let, let everything that I do raise you up above everything else. Glory. Song writer says, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. He says, friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. But you know what? I got Jesus. <laughs> and because I got Jesus, it doesn't matter what the friends might think. You see? Jesus is enough. So 
Das ist ein anderer Staat. Ne? <lacht> I'll see you all next week. I gotta get through this. If you never tried, if you never tried, my Lord, I suggest that you give him a try. If you've been struggling with all, any kind of issues, if you've been sick, I suggest you give Jesus a try. He's a miracle worker. He raises folk from the dead. He still opens blind eyes. Do you know if you can be saved and still looking through worldly eyes, do you know he can open your eyes? He, he can open your eyes where you can start to see spiritual things. He can heal broken marriages. He can bring unruly children back where they need to be. He can do all these things if we would just let him. And you know what? When we let him, when we let the Holy Spirit take over and take control and take charge and we get out of the way, we bring glory and honor to his name. That's why we're here. We're here to lift him up. The song where I say, praise him, praise him, and lift him up. Up! So the dying world can see him. Glory, honor, reputation, worthlessness, worthlessness, worthiness, wealth, glory. We bow. Thank you, Lord, for your word. God is your word that makes us alive. It's your word that changed us from what we were to what we are. It's your word that can transform us to be more like Jesus Christ. Father, it's your word that can change hearts. And so right now, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. They gave his all. That we, Father, might have a right to the tree of life. We thank you that the Father drew us and gave us to him. And emphatically, he can say that all that my Father has given me, I have not lost one. Thank you for hiding us away in your son, Jesus. Blessing us, son. And Father, there's anyone that don't know you right now in the pardon of sins. We ask that they will accept you as Lord and Savior. Lord, we right now open up the doors of this church. That whomever your spirit is driving will come down to the altar and accept you as Lord and Savior. We thank you for this opportunity. This decision, Lord, is between life and death. Living eternally with you forever or living in eternal torment. So right now we open the doors of the church. <clears throat> Hail Jesus I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help.
that I can control. The, about the only thing that I can control is me. It ain't much in me I can control. But you know how I learned how to control me? It's telling it to Jesus. Jesus! You know where my mind is. Jesus, you, you, you know where my heart is. You, you, you know that things are raging around me now that I can't deal with Jesus. I need you. Need you. He always, always responds. That's what makes this song so beautiful. In my troubles, I can call on him. My pains, I can call on him. He's waiting for me to call on him. And as he works in our lives, the glory of God starts to shine through. It's prayer time. We have plenty of problems, plenty of pains. Somebody may just want to come to the altar and say, Lord, I love you. I thank you for the blessings that you bestowed upon me this week. I thank you for having a place for me where I have heat and the cold. A place where I have clean water to drink. I thank you for a place that you have given me this clean car to drive. These are all blessings. Because if you open your eyes as you drive up and down the road, you can see people that don't have the least of these things. But God is good. So we invite you now, if you'd like to come to the altar, 
that you come now as we prepare for intercessory prayer. And Pastor Linda, would you prepare to assist with communion? Will you bow with me? <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Lord, we're thankful unto you and we bless your name. Lord, we want to glorify you in everything that we do. We invite your spirit to take full control of everything that we do. Help us, Father, to live the life that you've called us to live. Help us to be more like Jesus Christ, your son. Bible says in the midst of all the ordeals that he faced, he never said a moment in word. Give us your power to live this Christian life. Give us your strength to stand firm. Tell the dark world that you live because you live within us. Help us, Father, to grow in grace. Father, we know that there are for people who are sick, bearing this family of sick. Right now, we lay them on the altar. Our friend Johnny, who helped work on the church, Father, only has a few days left to live. Lord, we want to put him on the altar. We pray, oh God, that you will touch their hearts. <clears throat> That, Father, we know that there's a place in the kingdom for them. You told us, Father, that as long as there's breath in our lives, there's an opportunity for salvation. We don't know if Brother John is saved, but, Father, we just pray that your spirit would do everything he needs, that he might be a citizen of the kingdom. Father, we just bless your holy and your righteous name. For all that you've done, all that you're doing right now, and all that you're going to do. And we pray that every heart in here will leave better than it came. Thank you now for all that you do for us. Thank you for lifting us up out of the miry clay and putting our feet on a solid rock. Yes, Thank you, Father, for unchanging us tearing off those shackles that we had, freeing us up to live a Christian life with you. We thank you now for just being so good. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all God's people said, Amen. It was on a Thursday evening. <clears throat> Jesus says, I must needs to share a meal with you again before I go. You see, even at, even at, at that hour, they did not understand why the master was truly here. But at night, at the third cup, Jesus says, this is the cup of my blood for the New Testament. The remission of sins that often as you drink it, you do show forth my death and suffering until I come again. You pray. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you that you allowed your son to glorify you. And because of that, Lord, that we too may glorify you. May every word we say, every thought we have, Lord, every deed we do, may it be to simply glorify you. God, we thank you 
that on that cross redemption became ours. We thank you that you have us in the palm of your hands and that you will not let go of us and that you will lead and guide us. And when the way seems so dark and seems like we can't make it, you are right there, Lord, cheering us on oh, like yes. a good, good father. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank we you. give you praise, Lord. Oh, we give yes. you glory because we know that it belongs to none other. Lord, we know that within us there is no good that you have not given us. But thank you that you have, according to Peter, Father, you have given us everything we need to live a good, godly life and to bring glory to you. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And after Jesus prayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that will be broken for many. Take, eat all of it. <clears throat> Likewise, he prayed and he took the cup and said, this is my blood of the New Testament that shed for the remission of sin. He says, and often as you drink it, you do show forth my death and suffering until I come again. Drink all of it.
That night, they sang the Hallel, Psalm 115 and 118. And they went out into the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go into, but we have our own homes in our neighborhoods. This city, this county, this state. And we need to go and tell people that Jesus lives. We need to tell people that that blood that was shed on Calvary 2,000 years ago is still as wet and sticky today as it was then. And still able to wash away the sins of everyone that come. We bow with me. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, for your presence. <clears throat> Thank you for your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Thank you for his leading and his guiding. <clears throat> Thank you for his unchanging hand. We pray now that everyone here in this own land will follow you in everything that you're led to do. That you might receive all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And we just ask it now in Jesus' name and for his sake. And all God's people say, Amen. Have a great rest of your day. Stay warm. I hope to see you on Wednesday night for prayer service and Bible study. God loves you, and so do we. Have a great day. Sister Shetaja. <laughs>